important and it's going to help some of us that are 35 and above. I'm not going to tell my age because I still feel like I look 24. that intro because you know what i'm loving that intro i did that for y'all that was for y'all well welcome back as always to the makia Dolce channel and i am so glad that you guys decided to stop by my page or my channel i should say and visit me so if you are a first time viewer please go ahead and subscribe show me some love go ahead and hit that subscribe button and stay in for a little while so you can see what it is that i'm talking about today obviously you can see from the thumbnail what the conversation is. And so I want you to hang out with me for just a little bit. If you are a returning viewer, I want to thank you so much because it is because of your support that we're at the amount of subscribers that we're at right now. I think it's almost like 130 subscribers and just 100, 130 subscribers in just about four or five weeks. That right there is absolutely amazing and it is because of you. So I just want to thank you guys. I really appreciate you. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and do not forget to hit the post notification bell so you know when I'm dropping the latest and greatest on you. So you already seen the thumbnail. I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about, okay? Now, I'm going to say this again. If you are new to my channel, I do a lot on this channel. I do mukbangs. I do challenges. Uh, I give you some business tips, some mentorship tips, etc. But then we talk about real life. And so today we're going to be covering a hot topic. You will see me look down because I wrote some notes down. And I do that often because I do not want to forget the most important things that I'm conveying to those of you that are viewing. You, you stop by my channel because you want to get some golden nuggets. If you've been on my channel, golden nuggets is going across your screen because that's what I'm dropping each week, right? So I wrote some things down because I wanted you guys to understand how much I care to really sit and pray and ponder on the content that I'm going to be bringing to you. So today, I think what I'm going to be talking about is pretty important and it's going to help some of us that are 35 and above. I'm not going to tell my age because I still feel like I look 24. Even though some people in my family, like my daughter, who is going to be 16, she seems to disagree but for me, I feel like I'm 20 on some days, okay? So, all right, let's go ahead and get into this topic. Remember, I'm going to look at my notes because I do not want to forget, okay? So, how are we going to engage with the 20-something community, right? That is going to be the topic of what we're discussing. I think is absolutely important. And I have a newfound respect. Over the last four years, I have found a new respect for those that are in their 20s, Okay. Just because we may be a little seasoned and then we have those that are more seasoned than us, but just because we experience life a little bit more and a little bit differently doesn't mean that they, they can't add value to us, okay? And so this is one of the topics that I thought was very relevant, especially in 2019, uh, going into the new year. It's relevant this year, it'll be relevant next year and the years to come if we start to understand how we engage with those that are in their 20-somethings, okay? So here's my number one for you guys. Don't call them millennials. I had to write it down. I told you guys, look, I'm going to show you. See, I write little notes. Even on hotel paper, I'll write it everywhere. Do not call them millennials. And I'm going to tell you why. For some of the 20-somethings, Okay, we're going to call them 20-somethings. They get offended when they're called a millennial. And I'll tell you why. Because millennials tend to be grouped or stereotyped amongst those that may be lazy, don't have any work ethic, um, and really are not going to go after it. A lot of employers, and me being an entrepreneur, Sometimes we may shy away from someone who's in their 20-somethings because we want someone who's experienced life. That's not always that's not always true. If you're trying to stay stuck in what you were doing 20 years ago, then go ahead and keep hiring the people that have experienced life. If you're trying to engage in 
into this new age. And if you're trying to understand the way the world works for the 20 somethings and move your business to the next level, we might want to start listening to them. So if you're a millennial right now and you're listening to this, this is for you. You get what I'm saying? So go ahead and comment. Go ahead and like, please hit that subscribe button and do not forget to hit that post notification bell. Okay. So that was the first one. Let me dive into another one. With uh, the 20 something community, you definitely have to create authentic relationships. You cannot be fake at all. They sense this. You know, I watch a lot of, uh, of the 20 somethings. Okay. I'm going to call them that, that have their YouTube channels. I watch them on social media outlets. And I'm telling you, they value authenticity more than you think. For those of us that are 35 and above, we may think. Now, if you if you disagree, go ahead and drop a comment. And if you want to add some value to what it is that I'm sharing today, go ahead and drop a comment, okay? But for the most part, authenticity is what I know being a mother of two 20-somethings, okay? It is very important that the people that they surround themselves with are very authentic. So if you have to give them this facade, they're not down for it. They're, they do that amongst their peers. So imagine if you're coming in and you're above 30, let's just put above 35, let's do above 35, okay? If you're above 35 and you're trying to come into their circle, but you're not authentic at all, you're going to lose them. The whole purpose of me sharing this with you is so that as you move on into the next year, you may be able to elevate in your business and in your relationships if we start to tap in to true authentic relationships with our 20 something. If you like what I'm saying so far, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Okay. The third one, you got to embrace their vision. Okay. And their purpose. I do not believe that anytime a 20 something comes to us with a vision that they should be shot down. Oh yeah, you know what, young buck, you don't know anything about that because you know, when I did that back in 1957, they could care less. I have learned that they want relevant, up-to-date statistics when you're com conversing with them, excuse me, when you're conversing with them regarding their dreams, their purpose, and their vision. Some of them are not purpose-driven and that is where you can come in as a seasoned individual, okay? and be able to offer some wisdom, offer some, some knowledge. Why not mentor these 20 somethings? And then you can learn something from them and they can learn something from you. We call that in the financial services industry and in the business world, we call that the exchange principle. I'm gonna give you some mentorship. I'm gonna give you some guidance. You're gonna show me the way it works in this day and age. The exchange principle, when you're talking to the 20 something community is absolutely a go-to if you want to be able to engage with them and be able to see movement in your business as well as movement in their lives. Because I'm here to tell you this, the 20 something generation, they are the ones who are going to take this world to the next level. These are our future entrepreneurs. These are our future engineers, doctors, lawyers, surgeons. They're going to be the ones walking on the moon, doing spacewalks, etc. And at the end of the day, if you don't treat them right, they're going to be the ones taking care of you if you don't act right in a nursing home. Yes, I said it. If you don't act right, we are left to be taken care of by these 20-somethings. You better respect them. You better embrace their vision, their purpose, and what God has put them here to do. You got that? All right, go ahead and comment, like, and subscribe. I hope that you guys are enjoying this content because I'm fired up about it. Because I have, like I said, I've always had a respect especially for those 20 somethings that are goal getters and that chase after what it is that they want. Oh, I'm all in. I want to know what makes you tick, what makes you run. Maybe I can do something different in my business. So if we don't start looking at them. Now I'm not saying that there's nothing wrong with looking at those that are in our same age category, because many of us have many successes that we can share. But what I'm saying is, if you have hit a plateau in your business, in your life, and in your circle of influence, or whatever the case is, we might want to sit down and chat and find out how the 20-somethings think, okay? All right, here's another one. Be honest about your failures, okay? Now, you have to be honest, because here's the thing. 
The fact that they are in their 20-somethings, they're going to try different things. They may start YouTube channels. You know, I remember one of my one of my sons, he was really interested in skateboarding. He used to tell me years ago, Mom, I'm going to make YouTube videos on skateboarding. And I used to go, oh, what? No, you're going to go to school and you're going to do this. I was wrong for that. I was supposed to, like I said on the last point, embrace the vision, but then also understand that you have to share some of your failures. Now, you don't have to throw up on them about how you failed and how this didn't work and et cetera, et cetera. But if that was something that my son or a 20 something had chose to do, and then it didn't go as planned, here is where you can come in as a mentor and explain that, listen, I want you to still be encouraged because I went after this business venture myself and it didn't work the way that I thought it was going to work. And so I want you to be encouraged. I want you to go after it. Maybe you don't have to throw the whole dream out the window, but maybe we can sit down together and maybe we can revamp it. Maybe we can look at it from another angle. Maybe you can see some of the failures that I some of the failures that I went through, some of the things that I did wrong, and I don't want you to make the same mistake. We have got to be in a position to share our failures and give them the short version, please. Give them the short version. They don't want to hear the long version of all our woes. They also want to see proof that you have tried and you have failed and now you have succeeded and now you revamped and what what are the things that you did differently that is very important for our tweeting something okay if you're liking what i'm saying go ahead and give me a thumbs up i really appreciate it don't forget to share this video and please as always i'm asking you to go ahead and subscribe and do not forget to boom hit that post notification bell so you know when i'm dropping the latest and greatest on you all right i'm almost done let's see so I told you on that last point, make sure you give them solutions, okay? Here's another one. I, I spoke about this, but still get to the point. They have a very short attention span. In this day and age, the 20-somethings, they don't want you to start from the your date of birth. No, you're going to have to put this in a time lapse and you're going to have to get this information out to them and you're going to have to make it quick if you want them to stay engaged. OK, that's why I'm moving off from that topic, because I wanted them to stay engaged. All right. Last one. Embrace their way of communication. Then I can kind of toss this to the side. Embrace the way they communicate. Let me tell you something. If you're an entrepreneur or if you are an employer, you have to embrace the way that the 20 somethings are communicating in this day and age. You cannot tell them, hey, I sent you an email and you didn't check it because guess what? Some of them are not checking their emails. Why? Because that is not their way of communication. They use their social media pages, okay? And I'm not saying if you're an employer that you need to go hit them up on their Instagram, okay? Because obviously there needs to be checks and balances, all right? You want to make sure that you're a fit for them and they're a fit for you. And I think that goes both ways. For those of you that are employers and entrepreneurs that are bringing in interns and externs and things like that, there needs to be checks and balances, it's not just about if they work for your business and they and, and, and they can build your brand. They might want to check you out, too, and make sure that you're a fit for them. So please have a mutual respect, understanding that it's both ways. But you got to understand how how they communicate. So come on, toss out the emails. Don't even get mad that they didn't respond to an email. But if you text them. I find that you will get a response faster if you text the 20 somethings. They do not want to sit on the phone talking to you. They really don't. I mean, I'm telling you, I have 20 somethings in my life. I've been in business for many years with 20 somethings. They're not really trying to be on the phone. They want to get that message out quick. They want you to respond quick so they can move on and find out the next move. So I'm telling you right now, I hope that you have learned something because I have studied the way the 20 somethings like uh, for us to engage with them. And I think it's really important. It's just a few quick tips. I think it was about six of them. Just a few quick tips that will help you engage with the 20 something community. Again, please follow me on my social media pages. I am always here trying to do the darn thing for you. Like, comment, subscribe, and go ahead and hit that post notification bell. And as always, XO, I'm out of here.